We are coming on the air for a moment never before witnessed in American history, a former president on criminal trial. Donald Trump just arrived at the courthouse in Lower Manhattan for the start of his criminal trial here in New York City. Trump is charged with 34 felony counts of falsifying business records, which include allegedly concealing a hush payment to adult film actress Stormy Daniels just days before the 2016 election. He is the first president, past or present, to ever stand trial. And this is the first of four cases for Trump and his legal team. Trump is trying to juggle his legal battles at the same time he is running for president. I want to get right to ABC's Aaron Katursky, who's outside of the courthouse for us in Lower Manhattan. And Aaron, of course, we've been talking about how this is unprecedented. But just give us a, a sense of, of what you're seeing out there, what you're witnessing on the streets in Manhattan. Traffic was briefly halted, Lindsay. Pedestrians stopped in their tracks on the sidewalk as former President Trump's motorcade pulled up, and he entered this courthouse to both cheers and boos from a small group of protesters gathered outside, helicopters flying overhead. He is, after all, a former president and the Republican nominee in 2024, so the security is extra. Everything about this is extra. On one hand, a criminal defendant going inside this courthouse to stand trial is nothing new. This courthouse has seen all manner of mobsters and murderers, but the country has never seen anything like this. A former American president on trial as a criminal defendant. Trump is now headed up to the 15th floor of the courthouse where he's going to enter a rather drab, dreary room. And that's where he's going to be spending most of his time potentially for the next couple of months seeking the White House from the 15th floor of this courthouse that he has used to his political advantage, uh, although the consequences here are certainly potentially dire because, Lindsay, these charges, if he's convicted of them, and he denies them, could land him in prison for up to four years. And, of course, we just saw moments ago him leaving Trump Tower before uh, making that trek downtown to the courthouse. I know you've talked about before prospective jurors are even brought in today. The judge may start uh, with a brief hearing. What would that be about? This would be about the potential former President Trump decides to testify if that happens. And he said he's thinking about it. The prosecutors would want to ask him all manner of potentially embarrassing questions about his sex life, about civil cases where he's been held liable for sexual assault and defamation of E. Jean Carroll, of civil business fraud, and the defense wants the judge to set limits on what prosecutors could ask. This is called a Sandoval hearing. It's common in New York State Court when a defendant is thinking of taking the stand in his own defense, and it may precede the start of jury selection. But once that gets underway, prospective jurors carrying their jury summons who have been through security are going to walk into that courtroom, see the former president, and wonder whether they'll be picked to sit in judgment of him. And Aaron, before we let you go, jury selection expected to last how long? Could be up to two weeks if necessary. The potential jurors are being asked 42 questions to weed out any potential bias. The lawyers here know Everybody in that room has heard of Donald Trump. The question is whether their view of him uh, can get in the way or not of being fair and impartial, Lindsay. Aaron Katursky for us. Want to now bring in our trial attorney and ABC legal contributor, Mr. Brian Buckbeyer. Brian, uh, give us a sense of how difficult it's going to be to select a jury in this case. Extremely difficult, but the judge has created some parameters to try to make that easier. Ultimately, we're going to find someone who doesn't have a bias one way or another, but they may know about the president about this case, but they're willing to put that aside to listen to only the evidence and information that both sides present to ultimately give a verdict, whether it be guilty, not guilty, or worst case scenario, potentially a hung jury. So many people will be watching. Brian Buckmeyer, we appreciate your expertise here.